January 2021, believe it or not, marks exactly 20 years since Haruma Fuji first set foot on the Kokugikan Dohyo. By way of a tribute, I'd like to post a few more excerpts from his 2018 autobiography, Body and Soul, to understand the driving forces behind the making of Sumo's 70th Yokozuna and nine-time top division champion. I put up chapter 1 way back in 2019, accessible via the link, so let's look here at some of chapter 2, which details his upbringing. I was born, writes Haruma Fuji, on April the 14th, 1984, atop a hill in the high last area of Ulaanbaatar, capital of what was then known as the Mongolian People's Republic. I was named Davanyamin Bambadoj, the third son of Father Davanyam and mother Miyagumar Suren. I was extremely quick to deliver, the duty, in fact, falling upon my own father, who held a nursing qualification, some two hours before the ambulance even arrived. There being few house phones back then, my mother's rush into labour prompted my uncle to dash into the street and find any means possible of alerting the hospital. They say I weighed in at 5.5 kilos. The hospital staff, unable to believe this themselves, put me down as five. We also had a custom not to talk too much about babies to those outside our family, lest we bring bad luck upon ourselves. My name, given to me by my father, is steeped in significance. The first part, Biamba, means Saturday, the day I was born. The second part, Dorj, is the Vajra, the mystical, invincible Buddhist and Hindu weapon which protects the body from harm. My father was one of ten children raised by his widowed mother in the renowned Mongolian sumo stronghold of Gobi Altai, some 800 kilometers west of Ulaanbaatar. He graduated nursing school with flying colors and harbored dreams of becoming a doctor but abandoned them in favour of pursuing Mongolian sumo and a degree in economics. For that complete change of career path, he was rewarded with the chance to meet my mother at the same university. My oldest brother, four years my senior, sadly lost his hearing as a baby, obliging us to communicate by sign language and facial expressions. Looking back now, this really helped me in my early days at the sumo stable, when I could speak next to no Japanese. My other brother, who's two years older, spent time studying in America, and also became an elite-level Mongolian sumo wrestler. We often grappled as kids, and I always seemed to beat him. My older brothers mainly living with my grandparents and in school dormitories, respectively, my home environment was akin to that of an only child. With both parents working, I found it normal to do the housework. Cleaning, the kneading of dough and the chopping of meat and vegetables ready for my mother to quickly turn into dinner. I always disliked the onions, though, and never included them in my portion. I'd say the most vivid memory of my childhood is of the month I spent with my nomadic grandparents in the Gobiartai countryside. This would have been when I was around seven raising the livestock in the grueling midsummer heat, milking, shaving the sheep and goats, collecting cattle dung for fuel, and of course, learning how to ride a horse. Everybody in the countryside rides one. It's just the way you get around. We Mongols also have a saying, make a cute kid travel a bit. And that's exactly what was needed to toughen me up and show me the value of hard work. Remember, as a nation, we were only in our sixth year of democracy back then, an incipient capitalism, with goods still scarce, and our diet mainly consisting of outdated dairy products. But at the same time, I feel the people were good, diligent and kind to a greater degree than now. After joining Sumo, I began thinking about what I could do for the people of Gobiartai, my father's hometown. Once means permitted, I arranged for a forest to be planted there, and for the construction of a park with a lake for pleasure boating. 
The water from the lake is pumped into surrounding fields to help grow vegetables. So essential to health and yet not a traditional Mongolian staple. And next to a school dormitory, I erected a public bath, accessible to all. With the region's limited rainfall leaving barely enough water for farming, baths were quite hard to come by. After my father died, Gobi Altai erected his statue, only adding to the nostalgia I already felt for it. <laughs>